actually. I just can't post it on Facebook because, you know, you, you only can do a certain number or a certain amount of time. Um, what actually had happened, just a brief summary, is I was actually pulled up on the motorcycle, and I did not realize that my temp tag was off of the motorcycle. And then um, he pulls up behind me. I was actually waiting for someone to bring a truck in the trailer to uh, pick up the motorcycle, and I had permission from the BP employee that was there. And uh, she said I could, you know, hang out there until um, a vehicle arrives to pick it up. And he pulls up to me without lights on, anything else, and I'm just sitting there um, on the motorcycle just waiting. And uh, he asked me uh, he asked me if he noticed, you know, if I knew that I didn't have a plate. I said, no, I didn't notice, but I, um, I'm waiting on the truck and trailer for uh, to pull up because uh, I have a 14-foot trailer. And uh, I was waiting for, you know, a ride to come up, which actually came there as my friend. He was inside of my vehicle. He arrived there shortly after the officer did, and um, he uh, basically told me that, uh, he, you know, after uh, talking so many random information and he realized, you know, it is my vehicle, the VIN number came back to me, I had insurance, um, uh, everything was okay, he told me that, uh, basically, that uh, uh, I told him I was just waiting for a trailer, he said, well, I'm just going to let you know that that's not happening, I'm having the motorcycle towed, and you're getting cited. So he ended up... Uh, I asked, you know, he, I asked him why and what was the reason for the stop was. And as soon as I asked him that, he, um, he actually handcuffed me. Well, he didn't handcuff me. He detained me and put me inside of his vehicle until the tow truck arrived. And he said that I was being argumentative, and that's why he detained me. And so I waited inside of the back of the car, and then he wrote me the citation. The tow truck arrived, and then um, that's whenever I started recording because he didn't uh, pat me down and take my phone out of my pocket or anything like that until after... Uh, after he actually, he actually ended up arresting me that night, but um, uh, yeah, so he, so I started recording inside the, the vehicle whenever he opened up the door, and he said, uh, this is what you're being cited for, and I asked him for, if, uh, you know, asked him if, uh, you know, why, why it was being, so that's whenever the first video starts inside it, when I was inside of the back of his cruiser, is that, um, I asked him what, what the reason for the stop was, and he could not answer the question, he refused to argue, and, and he told me, he tried to hand me the ticket, I said, I'm not taking it until you answer why I was being, you know, why I was pulled over. And um, he, he told me to get out of his car, and he didn't have to tell me that. And I said, that's funny because I've been pulled over numerous times, and every time the first thing an officer asks, it tells you, is, do you know why you're pulled over today? And, um, you know, we started arguing about that. He actually told me to get my property off of the motorcycle, and then I, I started to do that. I put the motorcycle in gear because it was on a downhill slope in neutral. Whenever I put it in gear, he told me that I was interfering with uh, the tow, and he arrested me and took me to jail that night. What was the charge that he had charged you with for that? Obstructing of official police business. And he, had, and, he and he gave you permission to go ahead and do what you were doing? Yes, he said, grab your, he, it's in the video too, that he said, grab your property off the vehicle. I said, so I can grab my bike? He said, no, just the property. And um, I have the rest of the video where it continues. And uh, the other officer told me that I can keep the key, because obviously, you know, on a motorcycle, you don't need the key to take it out of here to do anything. You can just simply either hold in the clutch or, or, or take your foot and shift up into neutral. And um, so the other officer told me I can keep the key, and I said I definitely want to keep the key. And whenever um, I put it in gear, that's whenever he, uh, he told me that he was going to arrest me. And in the video, that my phone dropped on the ground because he, he knocked it out of my hand, kind of, whenever he was arresting me. And... Uh, Oh, that's whenever uh, yeah. that's whenever the video ended. He, he actually arrested me, detained me. That took me. I had to get booked and everything, and wait inside of uh, wait for a couple hours till I posted bail that night of three hundred seventy-five dollars. And then when you posted bail, there's another video. Is that, did you guys get pulled over after you had posted? Actually, what's a uh, coincidence? Whenever I posted bail, my friend picked me up inside of my vehicle. Um, he was driving, and we pulled over to the BP in uh, right there by Red, Ridgewood and Ridge, right there. Um, it's a 24-hour subway. It's in there. My friend was hungry, so he went in to get subway. Conveniently enough, the the, the same, all of the officers that were there that day were actually eating subway inside of there. And uh, they left before we did. He ate a sub and finished up in there. They waited across the street in the parking lot. I think it's Key Bank's parking lot. They were closed down. They were all four vehicles waited in Key Bank's parking lot. And I, I even was talking to someone, and I said, you know, I just want to, you know, not have anything to do with this. I'm going to try and wait till they leave. They waited for us specifically. As soon as I pulled out of the parking lot, there was no other traffic anywhere. As soon as we pulled out the parking lot, he pulled out right behind us. He followed us all the way down the snow road. And I started recording as soon as he pulled out. That's where the other video is from. And that's from the same, so, that's from the same evening after you had bonded out then? 
Yep. That was a couple hours after I got arrested and taken to jail. Right as soon as I posted bond, this all happened again. So then he got me. Then he got my friend for driving without, uh, he didn't have his ID with him, and he, he gave him a ticket for that. And I, I said, no complaint. I asked him, you know, isn't this harassment? You're the same officer. You followed me all the way down, and you waited for us in the parking lot. And he said, no, this isn't harassment. And I said, isn't it excessive to have four vehicles because of no front plate on the vehicle? And then they said, no, you don't get to determine what excessive uh, they, is. They or asked like that. That we still had our firearms, so it, it shows that we were obvious that they already pulled us over. They knew it. I had a, I had a firearm in there, but I also, it's legal. They didn't, you know, cite me for any of that. It's, it was uh, unloaded in the glove box, and the magazine was in the trunk, how it's legally supposed to be transported. And uh, so that wasn't much of an issue, but he acknowledged that he uh, just pulled us over because he said, is the firearm still inside the vehicle? So he acknowledged that he already went through because whenever I got pulled over for the bike, they went into my car and searched my vehicle too because my friend was driving my vehicle. And that's when they pulled up. He didn't know where my papers were. They asked if there was any weapons inside the vehicle. My friend said, yeah, there's a unloaded uh, handgun inside of the glove box. And they checked that and, um, you know, everything uh, was fine with that. So they already knew that there was a firearm inside the same vehicle. I have a court date on the 26th that I'm pleading not guilty. 28th and I, that I'm pleading not guilty to. And um, I'm going to try and move forward there. I'm going to get a lawyer that, because uh, he's violated the civil rights, because he, you can't come on private property and harass someone about just because they're on a motorcycle. And I talked to a lawyer, and he informed me that, you know, it's not just you. It's everybody younger and male in Parma that they harass. And also, if you're on a motorcycle, they hate people on crotch, ro crotch rocket specific motorcycles. So they try and get them. Uh, she said she just got someone that go pulled over the other day. I think it was two days ago. Uh, they just got pulled over, and they had one headphone in, and because uh, they were using it to talk on the phone in case of a phone call, but uh, they cited him because they said there was headphones, and it was obstructing his hearing, and he couldn't hear anything, and they cited him for, like, three other different uh, things that were wrong with his motorcycle. The lawyer was telling me that. So, I mean, she said that she's confident that they do go after younger males in Parma, and they do go after motorcycles. She's dealt with them for probably 15 or 20 years now with all these cases. It definitely needs to stop. There's no reason why someone should have to be worried about driving through a city legally and getting harassed by officers that are supposed to be there to protect you. Completely understand, and, uh, you know, I just feel like it's not okay for them to harass people that are hardworking and actually trying to make a living for themselves and staying out of trouble instead of focusing on criminals that are, you know, ruining people's, people's lives and stuff like that.